Walker. He'll never guess my password. It's. Please welcome Kevin Mitchell. Great to meet you too. Now, uh, you, sir, were once considered the world's most famous hacker. You're the most wanted man in computer crime, correct? Yes. Okay. You were. You're a consultant now, but at one time you were. Uh, let's see. You bypassed the security systems of Motorola, Sun Microsystems, and Pacific Bell. Yes, I did. You served jail time for this. How much? Five years. Five years. And a year in solitary confinement. Why a year in solitary confinement? You don't look like a dangerous guy. I'm, I'm very dangerous. Now, <laughs> the, the prosecutor had told a judge uh, during a bail hearing that I could pick up the telephone and connect to NORAD and whistle the launch codes and launch a nuclear weapon. And because of this, the judge actually had a special order that I'd have to be held in prison without access to a telephone. So the only place they could put me was in solitary confinement. So I, I was there about that? a year. Can you do that? Could you do that? Because that would I've be badass. That would I've be badass. I've been practicing. <laughs> now, you've, you've, you've got a book about your experience. It's called Ghost in the Wires, My Adventures as the World's Most Wanted um, Hacker. Why did you start? Well, I was fascinated with the telephone system. I started as in, in a hobby called phone freaking, and I loved doing magic tricks and pulling pranks. I was a, a prankster by heart. And as the phone company became more computerized, I wanted to get access to phone company systems to pull pranks. And one of my favorite ones was to change the class of service of a friend's phone to a pay phone. So whenever, whenever he or his parents tried to make a call, it'd say, please deposit 25 cents. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And I was playing this cat and mouse game with the FBI because I must have been a little bit crazy. And as they were you actually taunting them? Not taunting them, but I was watching them through the cellular phone system as I was able to work out their telephone numbers and I hacked into the cell phone system so I can keep track of where they were. So if they got close to me, I would go farther away. <laughs> That's a good plan. It's a really good plan. Good plan. Do you miss the game? Well, I actually hack all the time. I don't. I, I haven't quit. No, just don't tell anybody. Well, how do you hack? Well, I, I you know, just the other day I hacked into this, you know, uh, company's uh, systems and got access to everything. But the only difference was is they actually gave me permission ahead of time. They actually gave me a get out of jail free card, so I could hack into their systems to find all their vulnerabilities, so they could fix them before the real bad guys. Is there any chance? that uh, you're just telling me that so you don't do harder jail time. <laughs> Possible. <laughs> Thank you so much. The book is Ghost in the Wires. We'll be right back. Well, I do hacking for a living. Companies hire me to break into their systems, and my success rate over the last decade is 100%. And I'm talking really? large financial companies to e-commerce. Yeah, 100% we get in. And that's probably because the hackers are ahead of the security industry. And it's really easy. Imagine if I could send you a file in, in an email or just one employee opens up a file that I send, a PDF file, and... That employee opens it, the game is over, the hacker is in. It only takes one employee to make a mistake. Well, Kevin, of course, then that begs the question, is there any way for a company to be 100% protected? Target says that this problem was fixed, this one hacking incident, but how do you protect against it if it's as simple as one employee opening one PDF? Well, it's really about people, processes, and technology, so companies have to harden their systems, harden their technology. They have to train their people. And actually to 
inoculate their staff against these social engineering attacks. And one of the best ways of doing that is actually doing mock attacks against your employees mm. to see who's susceptible to this type of uh, who's susceptible to this type of attack and then train those people specifically. Kevin Mitnick using his talents for good, which we like to highlight. <laughs> Thank you so much, <laughs> CEO of Mitnick Security. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you for having me on your show. This is a new attack that came out three weeks ago and we're talking about the insider threat. This has Linux embedded. This is a USB armory device on any locked Windows machine in any of your enterprises. I plug this in and it steals your password hashes on that machine. I plug them into a cracker and I get you.